Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about two of the new cards that are being added to the Witchwood expansion in Hearthstone, which are really going to define the set by the looks of it, um, and kind of give my opinions on where I think this might be heading. So, the first is Baku the Moon Eater, which is start of the game. If your deck has only odd cast cards, upgrade your hero power. And then, uh, again, Grey Main, which is 6 mana, 6 5. If your deck has only even cost cards, your starting hero power costs 1. Um, so, basically, if you played Dungeon Run, there was a Valak you could get that was very similar to this, except it had both effects and all in one. Of course, that would be way overpowered, and that's why it's stuck in Dungeon Run. Um, but the idea here is that you basically build a suboptimal deck in order to gain these effects. Now initially they only announced these two cards, but as you can see by cards like the Litter Moth, Bloom Stag, Black Cat, and Merc Spark Eel, it's not just these cards that ha are going to have this effect, it's actually going to be class cards as well. So, what I see this turning out to be is very similar to Cthune and Whispers of the Old Gods as a set, where you had Cthun as a legendary that they gave everybody for free. I don't think they'll be giving like Baku again for free, but who knows. Um, and the idea was that this card is good, but you have to build a very specific deck around it. And not in the sense that it's really a tribal deck, but in the sense that it's just, it's not useful unless you actually go ahead and build things. Like, you would never put a 10 mana 6x six six in your deck, really. Uh, unless you could actually buff it up, even with that battle cry effect. So in the same sense, you basically have to build a Baku deck or a Gen deck to make this work. Now, kind of unfortunately, uh, these class cards, I mean, we can't really confirm it yet, but it does seem like each class is going to be specialized in either Gen or Baku. Uh, I mean, can't say that 100%. Like, they could add some of both. Like, you could have Glitter Moth for an odd cast card deck, and then they could also add an even cost uh, class legendary. Um, I don't know if they'll do that. You know, actually, that's a good question. Will they do that? I don't think they will, but it's possible. So, if we assume, though, just looking at what we have available, they're going to push certain classes towards either Baku or certain classes towards Gen. Now, not every deck made with these, uh, or not every class made with these cards are, is actually going to be viable. So in the sense, there was a bunch of Cthune cards available, and pretty much uh, a lot of the classes had Cthune cards. But the only Cthune decks that were really ever played seriously were Cthune Warrior and Cthune Druid, if I recall. Although there were Cthune Mage cards and there were Cthune Priest cards. So even though that they add cards like Glitter Moth and Black Cat, I don't expect every class is going to actually have a viable deck with one of these two cards. Um, so yeah, putting that aside, let's take a look at what you're actually getting when you choose to play a Baku deck. So you get upgraded hero powers, which is exactly the same as Just a Card True Heart from the Grand Tournament set. Now Just a Card True Heart was a 6 mana 6 3 and you had to actually play the card in order to upgrade your hero power. So this is way more powerful, getting it from the start of the game. and you're going to be able to do it on, I guess, turn 2, because it's going to be a 2-mana upgraded hero power. And the options available to you are, if you're a shaman, you choose your totem. If you're a paladin, you get 2 one, one silver hand recruits. Mage, hero power does 2 damage. Warlock draws without taking damage, so it's basically 2-mana draw a card, no damage. Warriors gain 4 armor, which was really strong. Um, when the Grand Tournament set was around and games were a lot slower, um, gain 4 armor was a really powerful hero power. Rogues get a 2-2 dagger instead of a 1-2 dagger. Um, that pretty much sucked in the past, and I think it will still suck. Uh, Druids gain 2 armor this turn, but also 2 armor. Also not very powerful. Priests gain heal 4. Hunters gain deal 3 damage to the enemy hero. So, um, in terms of which of these hero powers are the best, definitely Mage, Paladin, uh, Priest, Warrior and maybe to a lesser degree Hunter. Um, but you don't have to worry about that too much, because Shamans that choose Totem Hero Power, you're probably not going to be building a Baku Shaman deck, because if we look down here, the Merc Spark Eel is a 2-mana two 2-3 two, if your deck has only even cost cards, deal 2 damage. Also, 
the new legendary that they're adding for shamans, the hero uh, legendary, which is uh, someone who's a witch. I forget what her name is, but she's an eight mana legendary. So kind of inferring from that mana cost, probably that um, that hero card is meant for these even cost card decks. Uh, also, I kind of think of Merkspark Eel as like the undersea witch Ursula from The Little Mermaid, just a little bit. Uh, I don't know. Just me. So, yeah, I think shamans, uh, obviously looking at this, they're going to be playing with Gin Grey Mane instead. So that means a one mana hero power, which I think a one mana summon a totem is a lot stronger than two mana pick a totem because you'll just be able to spam this way more and you can use it for... Um, well, I guess not evolve so much, but if there's anything involving totems, then getting one mana totems is pretty good. Um, so, shamans will probably have that kind of even cost deck, clearly. Um, but then cards, uh, decks like Mage, Black Cat, 3 mana, 3 3 spell damage plus 1, but if your deck has an odd cost card, uh, only odd cost cards, you draw a card, is incredibly powerful. Um, and remember, the upgraded hero power for the mage, which you would get from Baku, which is for odd cost cards, uh, deals two damage as a hero power. So two mana deal two damage, that's almost like having a frostbolt as a hero power, not quite, but pretty good. Um, probably, well, hmm. yeah, I, I would say in a control deck it might actually be better than uh, making your hero power cost one. It's a hard call. But anyway, it seems like Blizzard kind of knows that some of these upgraded hero powers do actually suck, like Rogue, like um, to a less degree Hunter, and probably Druid as well. So, um, you get Mage to be associated with the card that's actually good with it, and you get Shaman to be associated with the card that's good with it. Um, no, I, I, I don't know if that 100% stays true here, because Druids if your deck has only odd cost cards, that would mean it's a backer deck, which does mean the two armor, two attack hero power. It's, it's not actually that bad, though. Um, but yeah, if you play that kind of deck, this becomes a 5 mana 4 8 taunt, which is pretty insane overall. Um, also, some people have pointed out that this is a good, a pretty decent card to pull off of... Uh, what's that guy? Max Master Oakheart. If you were happening to try that kind of playstyle. Um, so, you know, taunt minion, maybe play Hydronox, uh, maybe some one attack taunt minions could be pretty decent. And then over here for Priest, uh, also getting the odd cost cards, double the health of your minions. Um, I don't actually think that this card is as good as cards like Black Cat and Merc Spark Eel. Um, because if you are going to be building, um, a Baku Priest deck, that means you're playing around, oh, your hero power heals for 4 for 2 mana, so really good value in the late game. But this, uh, this kind of effect would imply more of an aggressive deck, where you want to maybe do some inner fire cheese. Aside from that, it's only good if you already have a board of like 2 or 3 big minions and then you double their health and you outvalue your opponent. Um, but that's not really that realistic when you're the defensive player, just in general. It would become a win more card. Um, so, I, I think when it comes to certain classes like Priest, it's looking like it's going to be more gimmicky. Maybe Druid is gimmicky, but then maybe Shaman and Mage are incredibly strong. So, that's how these cards are going to turn out like Cthune did. Um, you get cards that would allow you to build that kind of deck in multiple classes, but they end up being only good in a few classes after some playtesting is done, and after people determine that adding cards like Black Cat is overpowered enough to give up half the cards in your collection. But I'm, I think in a way I am glad that they actually added some supporting cards, because these alone, if you really had to build an entire deck and only gain this effect, it would not have been strong enough. So, with the support of several class cards, who knows how many cl uh, cards they'll add per class, and still have yet to see if there will be odd and even cards for every class. Maybe there'll be some neutral ones as well. But it's looking like a few viable decks may pop up in the meta as things go forward. So I think this is a pretty cool mechanic. It definitely opens up possibilities for the future, in the sense of, like, you add elementals and Angoro, and maybe people can try elemental decks. Maybe they all suck but they're at least worth considering. So, that's going to be it for today. Uh, obviously, 
Blizzard will be releasing more cards as we go forward into the April release date. It's sometime in April, I forget the exact time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my rant taking a look at these odd and even cost mechanics inside of the Witchwood expansion for Hearthstone. So I've been Dark Skeleton, thanks for listening, and I will see you guys in my future video content.